Hey, Hadaka guy here. Just wanted to take a few minutes and show you guys a few of the different styles of plus nut and rivet nut installation tools that are available, and maybe some of the pluses and minuses of, of each of these tools that we see here before us, and then talk a little bit about the difference between a plus nut and a rivet nut, and maybe when you would want to use uh, either of those in what situation. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. I guess the first thing to talk about would be, you know, what is a plus nut or a rivet nut? Basically, I'll pick up a rivet nut first. Basically, a, a rivet nut or a plus nut is a small device that allows you to drill a hole into a piece of sheet metal and quickly add a threaded insert uh, so you can put a bolt in, uh, attach something to the wall, and quickly remove it again. Um, these, two, these little devices work by, like I say, you drill a hole in a piece of sheet metal, um, you insert the rivet nut into the hole, and then you use your setting tool that screws into this and squishes this and, and, um, against the sheet metal. So basically this device ends up getting pinched between the sheet metal and leaves a threaded insert that you can now run a bolt in and out of. So since we're talking about uh, rivet nuts here, I'll show you a plus nut as well. Rivet nets have been around for a long time. They're a handy little tool. Um, get it to focus here. Here we go. Uh, the rivet nut on the right and the plus nut on the left. So a couple of the things you can notice real quick is the plus nut is considerably thicker and stronger than a rivet nut. Um, you can see the shoulder or the head uh, at the top is quite a bit thicker. It's also a lot more surface area. So when you look at a rivet nut compared to a plus nut, the rivet nut has a very small surface area where it's actually pinching and grabbing the sheet metal, where the plus nut uh, has a lot wider surface area and, like I say, a lot thicker metal. Um, on the back side of these, the plus nut is also a lot longer. And when you pull this and uh, down to set it with the tool, these little uh, bars right here spread out in a plus pattern and they expand to three quarters of an inch. So you've got three quarters uh, grabbing on the back side of the sheet metal uh, to sandwich this, this wide head here into. So you end up with a very secure connection. Um, if you're gonna hang any weight off of them or if they really need to be structural, a plus nut is, uh, is a lot better than a riv nut. So the riv nut, uh, when you put the tool and compress this one, there again, it's, this is going to sandwich up this little perforated area here, and it's gonna pinch uh, the sheet metal between this little lip right here and the back part that, uh, that gets squished out. Just doesn't offer very much in the way of uh, surface area um, where it's grabbing that sheet metal at. So I would use a riv nut if you're looking for something that's just gonna be very light duty. Um, and a plus nut if it's going to be anything that's uh, structural. Um, so in our van, we're doing a, a sprinter van build right now. All of the L track that I'm assembling is being done with uh, plus nuts. There again, they just offer quite a bit better holding power. Uh, they're a lot more secure than a riv nut. They're also a little bit more money than a, than a riv nut, and they need a little bigger tool uh, to set and install a plus nut versus a riv nut. Um, let's look at the tools here. So this is a riv nut setter or a riv nut installation tool. These are probably the most common type of tool that you would find at a hardware store or maybe an industrial supply like Granger. Um, to use this tool, it's pretty simple. Um, you can see that when I squeeze the handle, the mandrel or the threads get pulled back into the tool. So you would drill a hole in your sheet metal, slide this riv nut in, and then you would stick the mandrel on it, and you'd use this little knob on the back to crank that down until it's up flush. And at this point, you would squeeze the handle. And you can see the riv nut pulling back. So it's not quite set fully at this, at this point. You would let it off. You would tighten it up a little bit more, give it another squeeze until it's tight, and now it's set. And then to take it back out, you would just unscrew the mandrel again, and what you end up with is a compressed tool. So with no sheet metal in it, you can see it kind of pulled a little bit crooked here, but normally it would pull up tight like that, uh, right to the sheet metal, and that, that's it. So you can see the riv nets have a, a pretty limited ability to grab the sheet metal. There's just not a lot of surface area there. Now on a plus nut, um, 
it, like I said before, it takes a little different tool. So one of the things about a plus nut versus a rivet nut is they're not, the mandrels are not as long. So you can see that I'm going to need a considerably longer mandrel here to reach the threads of this plus nut. Plus, since this is thicker metal, it takes quite a bit more effort to compress this versus a, a rivet nut. So this, does, this tool here does not have enough leverage to properly compress uh, a plus nut. So what I've been using uh, for the manual installation tool is an Astro 1450. This is a plus nut installation tool. So when you expand this tool, you can see the mandrels comes out and that the thread length uh, is appropriate for uh, a plus nut. So this works very similar to the rib nut tool. You would drill a hole, put your plus nut into the sheet metal, and then you would use this knob on the back to run the mandrel in. At that point, you would just take both handles and compress it. And then as you compress, you can see that the, uh, let's get it back in focus here. You can see that as you compress, the plus nut expands out. Just like the rib nut tool, you would have to let up on it again. Tighten it a little bit more. Do it a second time. And at that point, it's set. So you open the tool back up. Now the plus nut is bound in, into the sheet metal. You just back the tool out. And this is the set plus nut. So you can see that the back side there is, is three quarters inches wide, coupled with the larger diameter uh, face there, you get a lot more bite, a lot more surface area to hold this plus nut into the sheet metal compared to a rib nut. Uh, one of the things about the Astro 1450 tool that I don't really like, um, because of the way that this tool is designed, when you start closing it, it's real easy to get more pressure on one side than the other. And because of this long momentum arm, this leverage arm here, as you compress it, it's really easy to twist the rib nut as it's being set. So often with this tool, you'll end up with a rib nut once it's set that's a little bit crooked or it'll kind of tweak the sheet metal as, as you're uh, trying to keep this thing straight and compressing the, the plus nut. So, um, you know, when you're all done, you collapse the tool, you can just use the tool itself to straighten the uh, plus nut back up and then release it, take the tool out. Not, not that big of a deal, but uh, it is something that's it's hard to drive a, a plus nut, set a plus nut completely straight every time with this tool without having to tweak it a little bit after it's installed. This tool also, you can see the head of this tool here that I got is crooked. So this head was cross-threaded from the factory, which does not help uh, in setting a rib nut straight either. So I'm going to have to order a couple replacement parts on this particular tool to get this tool back in 100% uh, work in order. The uh, last tool that we've got here is a pneumatic plus nut setter. This is a really slick tool here. I borrowed this uh, tool from a friend here recently, and I've been using this on my, uh, on my van build now. Um, this thing sets plus nuts uh, perfectly straight every single time. And you can see the, uh, let's, there we go. So basically the mandrel on this particular unit is just a standard quarter 20 bolt available at any hardware store. If you pull the uh, quick release collar back, you can see in, uh, inside here, let's get it to focus. That's just a standard Allen bolt. So if you're gonna do rib nuts or if you're gonna do plus nuts, you can just go down and buy a, a nice stainless steel bolt there, whatever length you need. If you mess one up or mess the threads up, you don't have to buy expensive uh, repair parts. Um, just click it back in and uh, you, can, you can fix it at your local hardware store. So that is really nice. Um, the other thing is this, this tool is extremely fast to use. So, You've got an air regulator down here, or basically it's just an adjustable orifice that limits the volume of air going through it. So you set your volume ahead of time so that the tool will basically stall out when the uh, plus nut is, is set. And 
to use this tool, you would do the same thing. You would drill, the, drill your hole in the sheet metal, install the uh, plus nut in, and let's get it to focus nice and clear here. You would install the plus nut into the tool, and then you would just hit the forward, forward trigger. And at this point, all you need to do is just press and hold the forward trigger. Until it stalls out. Now your plus nut is set. Hit the reverse trigger. And that's it. So there again, now we've got a nice uh, set plus nut. The threads are always perfectly centered. It doesn't pull the threads off to one side or the other. Um, extremely quick and easy to use. Um, really like this tool. So that's that, that tool is great. So the downside of this tool primarily is cost. So, you know, uh, the Astro 1450 tool, I think I paid in the neighborhood of around $80, $85 for that tool. Uh, and it comes with uh, several different mandrels, uh, depending on what size of plus nuts that you need to drive. Uh, this tool here, buddy said he paid uh, $290 for, so close to $300 for this tool. So if you're doing a lot of them, uh, if you've got a large job or you're doing you know more than one uh, van build, etc., I would highly recommend the Nomadic tool. Um, the Astro 1450 though does work, and um, it's pretty cost effective, uh, especially if you're only doing a single build. So. Anyways, I hope that you found this informative. Um, I'll be doing more of these builds in the future. Uh, you can follow me on YouTube at Hodaka Guy, and I am on Instagram at Hodaka Guy Tom, where I post uh, pictures of our van build and uh, pictures of our travels. So until then, I hope you guys uh, continue on your builds and hope everything goes well. And we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.